in this session we'll try to discuss about the model risk so the key concepts that we are looking at is what are the major sources of model risk especially one could very much cause because of the modeling assumptions so as a part of our model building process whatever the assumptions that we have taken so the problem with those assumptions could induce a model risk means we losing the firm losing because of using a wrong model that is what comes under a model risk so there are two stages one in relation to the building of the model so this is what we would look at as the first aspect and second right uh, uh, once we have conceptualized it in terms of implementation or development or the construction of the model what could be the problems that could be there and uh, what are the various procedures that we can have to mitigate this model risk and probably couple of uh, case studies one associated with london way where jp morgan has lost uh, quite heavily because of uh, a wrong model and similarly we'll look at the cases of long term capital management as well where uh, a wrong assumptions relating to the model has resulted in a huge loss for the organization now in this context the first part while we are developing or conceptualizing the model right let me look at this as a conceptual stage when we are conceptualizing the model the various assumptions that we are making how they can introduce the model risk now in this stage we primarily talk about the mathematical errors the formulas could be erroneous or the assumptions can be simplified the real world behavior is much different from what we assume a while developing the model so if the assumption that we are using are very much simplified they can they can be misleading they can be inappropriate in that case also the model that we are developing will give us the wrong results which will uh, enable us to take wrong decisions as well now look at some of the very common such kind of scenarios that or assumptions that we make while building the model the probability distribution right the distribution the statistical distribution of the underlying asset many a times we assume that it is stationary the distribution does not change if it is following a normal distribution under all conditions under all markets the asset returns follow a normal distribution only whereas what we observe in reality is the distribution can change over time it can behave differently in different economic scenarios now while considering the building of the model we may or may not be considering all these possibilities then the other common assumption that we make is the volatility is constant throughout the entire period of the model and that is what i think is one of the base while we are building our black scholes model for option pricing also the sigma is assumed to be constant but in reality we all know that the volatility keeps changing there will be periods where the volatility is much higher the periods of low volatility so and there could be a heteroscedasticity as well different periods the volatility could be different so the models in reality could have a different behavior altogether as far as the volatility is concerned but we may make an assumption of constant volatility while building the model so when we have to make the volatility more and more volatile or stochastic right if i have to really bring in stochastic volatility into my model then my all my option valuation models become very very complicated for computation so 
again it's a trade off between the assumptions that we are making and the reliability of the model many a times the data that we are dealing with may be non normal in nature there could be fat tail distribution very common thing the stock returns if we see many a times they are fat tail distribution but many models are being developed under the assumption that they follow normal distribution so which means the more and more i rely on empirical distributions rather than the theoretical distributions like normal or log normal or whatever then i can correct my errors in the model to some extent but the more and more theoretical distributions are relied upon probably there could be an issue with the accuracy of the model then the number of factors while building the model in reality there could be hundreds of factors but if we consider all those factors that are impacting a particular uh, uh, that are impacting uh, a particular risk then our model becomes very much complicated so many a times we try to simplify the model by trying to consider only a very few important risk factors and ignoring many of the factors which can really induce the model risk and and probably you might have already observed by now that any model that is developed there are hundreds of assumptions that go into that model development but one common assumption that we see with most of the models is they assume that the markets are very much perfect right they are very very efficient there is a lot of liquidity associated in the markets whereas in reality we have observed especially during the financial crisis even the so called most liquid instruments like the commercial papers or even the repos they became more and more illiquid so which means even those need to be considered rather than assumed to be by default the capital markets may not be perfect always so how do i really consider those kind of assumptions as a part of my model building will only give ideas of reducing the model risk and in many a cases okay mathematically my model could be correct but for a particular product it may not be appropriate for a particular situation this formula may not be appropriate so in that case also there is a model risk that is possible and some kind of models everything fine mathematically right usage right but yes they are good for x kind of products probably they are good for fixed income securities but they may not be good for stocks or probably uh, they they are good for finding the credit ratings giving credit ratings to the individual firms but the same model may not be appropriate for giving the credit ratings towards to cdos i can't use the same model because of the limitations associated with Uh, across different products so all these things where we are creating wrong assumptions to create to develop our models will definitely induce the model risk similarly the second aspect where the model risk can come up is during the implementation of the model many a times the implementation errors could be by accident or even it could be a fraud from one of the employees and the bigger of this is the programming errors software related right conceptually a good mathematical formula is designed but when it is getting translated into a programming language it is not translating one to one so that kind of programming error can really affect the output of the model 
and many a times when we do the testing of the model we do the testing in normal conditions with normal data in in general kind of scenario but suddenly this model can become erroneous in the extreme scenarios which we might not have tested before launching the model similarly let's say we have a model which is having monte carlo simulation we are running simulations hundreds of simulations to really assess the risk in a particular portfolio if the prices are very much inaccurate and probably if i did not take care of enough number of simulation runs if i did not uh, uh, simulate enough number of times the number of steps are implemented not not implemented enough number of times then probably i can very well end up in not being able to hedge my portfolio comfortably so one of the errors in implementation is enough number of simulation runs especially when you are using monte carlo simulation and many a times when we are talking about the pricing models general usage of different kinds of statistical tools come into picture to est estimate the model parameters probably uh, i'll be using the ordinary least squares kind of a method or a maximum likelihood kind of a method or method of movement some kind of a method is engaged to estimate the parameters of the model so if i want to estimate volatility or correlation we might be using one of these kind of statistical methods to arrive at the coefficients associated with the model but how frequently are we updating these parameters right how frequently the model is getting updated is it the same data that is used every day is it the same set of parameters that are used uh, for every day prediction or are we going to change it every day so what is the typical process for updating the parameters going as a part of the model and we know that all the statistical estimators that we are using they have estimation errors plus or minus we get a parameter value of x but there is a standard error associated with it which means the parameter value could be anything x plus or minus something so to what extent how are we handling those kind of uh, estimating errors that are coming in the model and how accurate are the inputs that we are giving how accurate are the parameter values that we are feeding into the model will uh, will decide what is the goodness of fit of the model so there is a very good chance of a model risk which we really need to be aware of while while using any sophisticated model in place now now that we know that there is a lot associated with the model risk so how do i really mitigate that the first and the foremost thing that we expect is research the research has to be very strong to improve the model so what kind of statistical tools need to be used what is the what kind of advanced tools can be used either internally my research team needs to be strong or it can be done at an academic institution at a university with which the companies can typically collaborate so the first thing is if at all the model risk has to be mitigated a lot of research should go into the planning and development of the model and once the model is in place there should be a very strong vetting procedure vetted by an independent team so they should really come out with a very stringent process on how the model is selected and constructed and uh, it has to be linked with the profit and loss calculation as well so there should be an independent vetting team who should ask for full documentation of the model right from all the assumptions which are going into the model the mathematical expression the formulas that are being used 
all the assumptions that have gone into the visualization of the model. Now, this is where the model vetting team should really verify the model. Is it very much logical for the kind of an instrument that it is being used for? So, are the assumptions more appropriate for this uh, instrument or they are lagging something? So, there should, be, there should be a proper verification of the mathematical model saying that is it reasonable representation of the instrument that is getting value. And we also need to check as a model uh, vetter or a model vetting team, there should be a check that the model, that the middle office has independent access to the market risk management financial rates database. So, whether the middle, ac middle office is able to have the access to the uh, database, all the financial rates, do they have the access to that? And they use that as a part of the model to check the deviances of the model. Even the vetting team should develop a, a benchmark model. So it could be based on the based on their experience and based on the lookout of uh, based on uh, validating the existing model. They can develop a benchmark model based on the assumptions and they can try comparing both the stuff. So the model should have at least all the basic properties. Right? The basic things should definitely get through. And then there should be a stress testing of the model, which is extreme conditions, think of all the extreme possible conditions, give them as the inputs and see how the model is behaving in all these scenarios. And that is where if required, the parameters need to be reinvest, re-estimated. Re all the uh, advanced statistical procedures should be helpful in terms of re-estimating of the parameters. But all these, if I have to put it in simple terms, Having a good model, robust model, which is very simple to understand and implement is much, much effective compared to a very ambitious, but a very fragile model. So we have to be very careful in terms of what we really want as a part of the model. But yes, definitely uh, putting a lot of effort in research and verification and validation of the model definitely plays an important role in terms of mitigating the model risk and making the model more reliable for the implementation purpose. Now, let's look at two case studies where the model, model risk was much higher and a wrong assumptions going into the model have costed the companies a heavy amount. London Way, 2012. JP Morgan has lost billions of dollars from an exposure to a massive credit derivative portfolio. And what we have seen in this process is the biggest contributor to this loss is the fudged VAR model, value at risk model that has been developed. There is a manipulation that has been done on the top of that. If you look at the, the, the consequences that went into it, the computation of the VAR, whatever was the existing model at that point in time, a lot of analysts found that it was very much conservative and it was overstating the risk. So the risk was much higher, very conservative and uh, probably uh, uh, JP Morgan is not that aggressive because of this particular model. And uh, so because of that, the CIO has come out with a kind of an alternative model, especially in Jan 2012. And at that point itself, the CIO was in the breach, whatever was the VAR limit across the bank, that has been breached by the CIO already. <laughs> In that scenario, there is a new model that has come up. But of course, the approvals for that same did not come up. Without the approval, the model has been implemented. 
and the key thing of that model is the war has come out come down by 50 percent so earlier the x was the war now it came to almost x by 2 so which means now it's no more a breach right because your war limit has come down drastically so you are nowhere exceeding the war limit and and it has even prompted more and more risky derivatives trading because now the var limit is much much lesser probably the the, the derivatives the, the, there is there has been a very risky investment in the derivatives now and by this time the damage has already occurred just in a couple of months the bank got an understanding that the model the new model that came up was improperly and implemented there are a lot of errors. The assumptions that went into the building of the model were inappropriate. The data entry process was having a erroneous. The formula was uh, wrong. There were calculation errors going into the model. Now, just May 10th, four months from the implementation of the model to the realization period, though there is a backtracking to the earlier model, Right, the old model itself was uh, again gone back to, but what is being observed is the inaccuracy in portraying the risk, which has resulted already costed billions of dollars for the company. So you could see how model risk has played a very significant role in big trading loss for this kind of company. Similarly, long term capital management, I am not going into the story. Right, a big hedge fund company across uh, uh, which has uh, billions and trillions of dollars of assets way back in 1998. Now here also the problem came because of the value at risk model only. Right, uh, so the, some assumptions that are usual in the regulatory war calculations have been used even in the building of the value at risk model here. But some of the things here, the time horizon for the determination of the economic capital, it is being used as 10 days, uh, which has been as a part of the regulators. The, the bar here, the, the time horizon that has been used for calculating the economic capital, it is being taken as 10 days for the derivation of the hedge fund war. So this is 10 days for any market risk war and the same number is being used for the derivation of the hedge fund risk as well. But there is a problem here raising new capital or even if it is a crisis scenario is there, I need to consider at least the time that it takes for the crisis to unfold. So the 10 days is looking too short, whereas these, uh, this organization has taken 10 days as a time period for the computation of the economic capital. The major risk that we have seen with LTCM is the liquidity risk is not factored into the traditional war models. So the main assumption is whatever happens, the normal market conditions are going to prevail. And the normal market condition is there will always be perfect liquidity in the market. And that is what uh, if, if uh, the extreme things come into picture, the liquidity will be hampered badly. And that's what could cause heavy losses. Even the correlation and volatility related tests, uh, risks are not captured into the model. They can be captured only through the stress testing. So not enough stress testing went into the model. So the extremities have not been captured as a part of the VAR model. Though this LTCM had two big Nobel laureates on the board. Most of a lot of, uh, uh, lot of mathematical practices going into the development of the model. But a couple of wrong assumptions have really resulted in one of the biggest uh, disasters in the world of financial man in the world of uh, finance in the last 20 years right so we have to be very careful looking at 
the model risk and it can play a significant role. Now that's what I wanted to look at from the perspective of model risk. So there could be uh, errors in modeling assumptions that can introduce a model risk. There could be some issues with respect to the implementation of the model. Then we, want, we have looked at what are the various procedures that are available to mitigate the model risk and looked at uh, two big, two big uh, losses or uh, disasters that have occurred in the last 20 years just because of model risk. So if you have any further queries, you can get back to me by giving me a call on the number below or you can send in an email at the email address that I have provided. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.